Cover him well over. Quick lime is cheap enough. We therefore commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Dr. Tennant's fainted. Quick, give us a hand.
have been back over the records and given you at least a dozen cases. Why on earth choose this one? It's the one clear case that'll prove my point. If Stiles had had the money to buy an adequate defense, he never would have hanged. Very well, let's take this up into my office. It's more fresh air up there. Right. I don't know why you social reformers always want to play detective to prove your theories. Because you detectives always leave such gaps in your investigations. Well, that doesn't apply to me. I wasn't on this case. Now then, what is it you want? There was a Dr. Horsley, the police surgeon on the case. I'd like to see his report. Ah, yes. Yes, here it is. I don't know what you expect to find. If ever a case was proved, this one was. Oh, uh -huh, no, but there's nothing in Stiles' life to show that he was capable of such violence. Except for this. He has positive identification of Stiles. A dozen people saw him that night in the Judas Hole. Why, one of them, uh, Cora says, she still sings there. It's quite impossible for her to have mistaken a one-armed man. Is the knife still in the box? <laughs> you nearly had me that time. You know it isn't. No, and it never was found. That's one of the gaps I was talking about. Ah, here's what I want. A young doctor named Tennant, Horsley's assistant. Horsley sent him to do the autopsy on Siles' body. Well, the law demands an autopsy on anyone who's died an unnatural death. Tennant collapsed at Stiles' graveside. Well, you said he was a young fellow. I young, expect perhaps, you... but not squeamish. Look, it's all here. Five young women brutally murdered in the neighborhood, and the autopsy on all of them was performed by Tennant. What are you suggesting? Why, that he might know as much about the murders as anybody else. But I can't find him. He never went back to Horsley. Not even to collect the salary that was owed him. Why did he disappear so soon after Stiles was hanged? It looks as though you're concocting some far-fetched theory out of your imagination. Is it so far-fetched? I wonder if he knew that Stiles was innocent. I wonder if he was hiding something. My dear Rankin, I've known you for an awful long time. Allow me to tell you I've never heard such rubbish in my life. How can you call it rubbish if you don't even know why Tennant disappeared? But I do. Look, it's all here in Horsley's report. Yeah, Tennant was admitted to Guy's Hospital seriously ill. It was from there he disappeared. Where are you going? But to Guy's Hospital, of course, to concoct another far-fetched theory. Yes, here it is. The third. Dr. Tennant admitted. Brought in from Newgate Prison, unconscious. Ah, yes. Suffering from hallucinations and loss of memory and some form of paralysis of the left side. Here is an opinion that if the hallucinations and attacks of paralysis with accompanying violence continue, he must be certified and confined to an asylum. Is that what you want? It makes no mention of the fact of his disappearance. It says here, Dr. Tennant missing from his room. Authorities notified. And that's all. With only a note. In the event of any person claiming Dr. Tennant's possessions, I have placed them in the lost property room, Pigeon Hole, number 602. If they're still there, I'd, I'd like to see them. Well, it's strictly against the regulations, of course. But should we look in the Pigeon Hole first? Thank you. Ah, here we are, sir. <laughs> Safe as the day it was placed there. Now, let me test my memory. That'll be Dr. Tennant. Yes, that's the one. Quite a scandal there was about it at the time. We all still talk about it. Scandal? What sort of scandal? Well, the young nurse who ran away with him. The doctors all said he was mad. She thought she knew better. And when the asylum van came, no patient, no nurse. I never heard what became of them. Do you remember the name of the nurse? Mm, I'm afraid you've got me there, sir. Very quiet, very quiet and reserved she was. Do you have records that go that far back? It would mean quite a search. It would be a great help if I could have that information. And, and if I could borrow these things, I should have to consult my superiors, of course. But I think it could be arranged. Will you come this way? Yes, thank you. <laughs>
Oh, good evening, Hannah. Good evening, sir. Has Dr. McCall come yet? Yes, sir. He's in the conservatory with Miss Lily. Shall I tell him you've come back? No, I'll find him, Aura. Oh, by the way, how is that young scamp of a brother of yours? Oh, sir, he's been very well. He's got himself a job as a porter at Covent Garden. Well, good. That'll keep him out of mischief. Tomorrow night. We'll never forget what you did for him, sir. Well, no need for him to go to prison simply because he had bad friends. Is that you, Jim? Aren't they beautiful? Now, don't frown. I'd be most careful not to touch any of your precious papers. Thank you, my dear. Did you have a good day? Splendid. I made great strides. How much longer are these investigations going on? Oh, I'm afraid the end isn't quite in sight, Barbara. But it's all past. That man was dead and buried 20 years ago. Let him rest. Oh, I know I can't bring Styles back from the dead, but one could force a change in the legal system so that a poor man would have a lawyer to defend him. Styles was a typical case, and there'd be plenty of others. Jim, I realize uh, how much... I must just find this young assistant of mine and... Oh, by the way, we're going out again. We won't be back for dinner. I wanted to talk to you about Lily. Later, dear. Oh, Ken, you must never return to Canada. I couldn't bear it. Unless you come with me as my wife. But that won't be for years. Not until you've completed your studies. Psychological medicine seems such a big thing. Darling, it's new. When I win my diploma, think of the prospect. A new idea and a new country. And with you at my side, nobody can stop me. I can't wait. Oh, there you are, McCall. Oh, good evening, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, Papa. I didn't know you were back. Even really? Uh, my boy, just give me a hand with this table. As usual, Burke was most helpful. Show me the complete file on the Stiles case. The trail led to Guy's hospital, but I found these things. They belong to Dr. Tennant. Now, first of all, a letter. From Australia? Yes, from a sheep farmer named Temple, saying he can give him work and he's station up country when he gets there. Then another letter from a shipping company, offering him a berth on a grain ship, but saying arrival in Sydney can't be guaranteed under six months. And here's the actual ticket, unused. He never left England. Exactly. That's not all. The usual paraphernalia, stethoscope, surgical dressing, and an instrument case from which a surgeon's knife is missing. I don't follow you, sir. What was the last case that he was employed on before we lost sight of him? You mean the autopsy on style? Exactly. An autopsy on which a surgeon's knife would be an essential instrument. Also the perfect instrument for murder. Excuse me, sir. There's a cab waiting. Says you ordered him. Thank you, Hannah. Get your coat, McCall. See, the contents of Tennant's notebook are most revealing. Intimate details of the killings of all five girls. Details that go far beyond an ordinary routine report on an autopsy. Why was he so fascinated by these gruesome details? Well, he was young. Perhaps he took trouble to follow through on the cases. I would want to myself. Oh, I doubt that very much, my boy. I regard it more as the abnormal, morbid streak that is quite lacking in everything we know of Styles, but could be used to build a case against Tennant. There is a point I think you overlook, sir. Uh, Tennant had the use of both arms. I know, I know. And the, and the women were only half strangled and then slashed to death. Of course, it's perfectly true. Styles was a one-armed man. But we mustn't overlook the word paralysis in Tennant's case history. Oh, I... I see we're getting close to our destination. And where is that, sir? Uh, the place where the last victim was killed and where Stiles was caught and identified. Uh, and the place that is mentioned so often in Tennant's notebook. The Judas Hole.
Could you give this note to Miss Cora Seth, please? Certainly, sir. Would you be good enough to wait up there? Yes. Police. Purely private business. Oh, that's different. Your Billy Doe about the Haymarket Strangler gave me quite a turn. Oh, I was only about 17 when I helped send Martha Stewart's killer to the gallows. Oh, you drunk. I'm not <laughs> drunk. I've never been drunk. And I shall never, never be drunk. Take this snout away from me. To the skin. I, uh, I don't think a handkerchief will be sufficient. Uh, where can I take you? Bring my fan. <laughs> Pearl may be your protégé, but you'll have to teach her to handle a man better than that. <laughs> She's young, she'll learn. Oh, well, don't stand there. Bring it in. Come here. I haven't thanked you yet for taking that lout off my hands. Oh, it was a pleasure. There. That was nice, wasn't it? Come on, Ducky, over here. <laughs> well, sit down. No need to be uncomfortable. Thank you. Well, now, Mr. The Rankin, what can I do for you? Well, uh... I'm a novelist, and I'm about to write a pamphlet based on the Haymarket Strangler murders. You mean Edward Styles? It's not about Styles I want to talk. There was a young doctor here the night of the murder, uh, a certain Dr. Tennant. Dick Tennant? He was here. You knew him? <laughs> yes, he was always about pestering us girls. Why do you say pestering? Well, you know, in and out, night after night, bottles of champagne. Never knew why a young doctor like him should want to go rampaging around the town. He, uh, he didn't seem cut out for it, if you know what I mean. Well, as a matter of fact, I a don't... A fine thing, Cora. He rescues me and I offer to thank him. And what does he do? Asks for his friend who's talking to Cora, he says. 
The gentleman are here on business, Pearl. Business? A fine story. What business have you got? My business. And you wrap yourself up and get back to yours. Well... Well, go I... on. Don't you sauce me, you little bit. You won't swell. <laughs> Little baggage. She won't come to much harm, a girl with spit it like that, eh? We were talking of Dr. Tennant. Was he fond of anyone in particular? He'd have liked to have been. You, for instance? No, I wouldn't let him lay a finger on me. Why do you say that? I don't know. He can't account for feelings. It's just something in the way he looked at you. When he touched you, it was... Anyway, he didn't want me. It was Martha Stewart he was after. The girl who was murdered. Poor Martha. I'll never forget that night. Not as long as I live. I was in here, you know. And I heard that terrible scream. I went rushing out. And I was just in time to see that one-armed creature running away. Are you quite sure that it was Styles? Are you calling me a liar? And the face. Did you see the face? I didn't have to see his face. I could tell that one on that one anywhere. What sort of a girl was Martha Stewart? Funny thing, that. She was as light pearl as two peas. Well, um, I've got to change. If you two gents don't want an eye fool, you'd better get out. Uh, quite. Quite. That woman's identification of Styles is worthless. Exactly. But what she had to say about Dr. Tennant is quite another matter. Now, McCall, I want his whole history investigated, just as thoroughly as we did with Styles. Yes, sir. You didn't wait up for me. I told you, dear, I want to talk to you. Oh, so you did. I'm sorry, but in the excitement of the evening, I quite forgot. Jim, what I wanted to say... I is... know that I shouldn't go on wasting my time. No, it wasn't. But I will say one thing. You shouldn't meddle with things that are outside your knowledge. You mustn't, Jim. You mustn't. I beg of you. I'm sorry, Barbara, but a man must do the work in which he believes. I'm sorry, dear. All I ask is that you... Don't overtax your strength. Make yourself ill. I won't. I've nearly finished, and then I can turn the summaries over to McCall. It's about him I want to talk. He and Lily like each other very much. Oh, oh Barbara. You see romance everywhere. Now, surely you didn't wait up just to tell me that. I did. Lily's spoken to me about it. I think she's in love with him. Well, in that case, I'll just have to give the young man enough work to keep him occupied. And so far as I'm concerned, dear, I promise you that very soon I'll settle down again and write another long three-volume novel suitable for the most genteel of young women. <laughs> now, my last inquiry, sir, was at the medical school. Attendance examination results were brilliant, but he was an erratic student. Well done, McCall. So there we have it. A father who beat his son unmercifully. A mother who drank and didn't care. Interrupted studies, but a brilliant mind, and carousing in places like the Judas Hole. Mm. Where we find that at least one woman refused him, and another couldn't bear his touch. Yeah. He'd have a need to revenge himself. Five times over in cold blood? Perhaps he had a compulsion to kill. Uh, afterwards, in his lucid moments, he, he might bitterly regret his actions. He, he might even forget them altogether. You mean he killed while he was in some sort of a trance? I can only theorize, sir. Yes, but it's a theory that applies to a man who had intermittent attacks of paralysis and great fits of violence. I can't contradict you, sir. He was trying to cut himself off from his whole life by going to Australia. Perhaps in an effort to rid himself of the compulsion to kill, he discarded the knife that had become the symbol of the murders. Well, it's an explanation, sir. But... Where was the last place that he would have had the knife? Well, I suppose he had it at uh, Stars' autopsy, uh, before the burial. Exactly. So the knife must be hidden in the most obvious place. Where? You can't deny it, McCall. In Stiles' coffin. I tell you, Rankin, I can't accept your theory. My commissioner throw me out in the street if I was to present such flimsy evidence. In any case, it's, it's pure supposition. A lot of psychological hot air. 
Give me that, McCall. Is that supposition? I ask you, where is the knife that should lie in that groove? Oh, was this Tennant's? It was. Again, I ask you, where is the knife? Well, it's, it's not the first time a surgeon's lost a scalpel, is it? How dare you disparage my opinions? I'm going to find that knife and hold it under your nose and make you apologize. I demand Mr. Rankin, that... I will save McCall. Burke, I demand the exhumation of Edward Stiles' body. I'm sorry, Rankin, but please don't drive me too far. And don't make a fool of yourself. I'm going to make an official demand for the exhumation of Stiles' body. If you won't help me, to whom should I make it? Well, if you must, I suppose the governor of Newgate Prison. But I warn you... Good day to you, and I'm sorry I can't add thanks. You had no right to admit him. I gave you the letter, sir. Now let him wait. Take this back with my compliments. And see him off the premises. Uh, this way, sir. Sir, who are you? I sent you that letter in all good faith. I never read such nonsense in my life. To exhume a prisoner, sentenced and executed 20 years ago for the whim of a scribbling novelist. I stated my reasons quite clearly. Reasons that claptrap? I tell you, I knew the man. I had the privilege of seeing him go to the scaffold. And if ever a blackguardly ruffian deserved his sentence, it was Edward Stiles. I'm not going to rest, you, Laura. I'll go to higher authority, I warn you. Oh, you're warning me. was the condemned cell. Tisn't everyone what can stomach a whipping. I was talking to the governor. Where is he? Oh, now, take it easy, sir. You've had a nasty turn. You're free to go whenever you like. <laughs> Previous <laughs> occupant wasn't so lucky. His uh, nibs instructed me to return this letter. Oh, he did, did he? Uh, begging your pardon, sir, the governor acquainted me with the contents. Of course, he ain't a free agent. He's hemmed in by rules and regulations. You follow me? I think I do. Do you know the location of the grave? Do I? <laughs> I helped to bury him. Packed him in quicklime, I did. He was a lovely fit. We couldn't get him in till we got his clothes off. Not half an inch either way. Please. They don't use that graveyard. Not once in weeks. Now, if someone was to let you in the gate late at night, Someone what knew where the coffin lay. Are you suggesting that you would... Of course, there'd have to be a consideration for his trouble beforehand. There'll be no trouble about the money, but how can I be sure that... I thought we were speaking as gentleman to gentleman. There's your letter. Be off with you. No, wait a minute, wait. Must you go on working, Ken? Yes, darling. Your father expects these summers by the morning. You never seem to have any time for me anymore. Oh, and now, darling. You know, that's not true. McCall! When I gave you the freedom of my house, I expected you to observe certain decencies. Well, sir, I was going to... But, Father, we're going to marry. Really? I thought it was customary for a young man to ask permission. Father, you must have known. Mother said she'd try to talk to you about it. I've no real objection to your joining my family, McCall. But I do wish you'd said something to me. It's bad enough being blocked and frustrated by the authorities at every turn without having you add to my anxieties. We had no such intentions, Papa. I'll see that she works harder than ever. You'll have to if I'm successful tonight. Uh, do you want me to come with you, sir? Thank you. No, McCall. 
You can't help me. Oh, Ken, I'm so happy. I think he means to give his approval. No, I'm not so sure. Since the day we went to Burke's office, I've... I've lost his confidence. I disagree with him. Then first thing tomorrow morning, tell him how sorry you are. Yes, I will. But I must talk to Burke again. Yes, but not now, Ken. No, not now. Should I wait so long? Your father hasn't yet told me that he approves Lily. And in any case, dear, it was very wrong of you to encourage Dr. McCall without speaking to me in the first place. Now, run along upstairs. I'll come and talk to you presently. Please, ma'am. Shall I lock the front door? No, Hannah, not yet. Mr. Rankin isn't home. Yes. Did he say where he was going? No, but I expected some meeting to carry his investigations further.
Fortescue. Oh, yeah, he wonderful. sends his compliments, and he said he wants you all to join him in fresh bottles when these are empty. Oh, yeah. 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 Good night. Come again soon. I shall, my pearl. You give an edge to a man's inclinations. Next time, I shall bring you a stone to match your name. Oh, two. Setting gold. I'll have one here, and one here. <laughs> You'd better go, otherwise Cora will miss her entrance, and then London will never be the same. George, see his lordship off. Good night, Rachel. And about time, too. Can't you learn to keep your big mouth shut? <laughs> Now, you listen to me, my girl. Until you're a great deal older, and I'm sure you can pick them right, you're going to stay right here under my wing. Not if you're going to spoil the chances I do get. You nearly lost me a pair of pearl earrings. <laughs> pearl earrings. Before I finished with you, 
There'll be diamond necklaces. You'll be patient, my pearl. I'll make you the toast of the town. Oh, you're a good sort, Cora. With you looking after me, I'll do all right. My fan. Right. How do we look? Gorgeous. If one day I can equal it, I'll be very happy. <laughs> you will, my love, you will. Tell George to put a bottle of start in my room, eh? All right, I will. Now, Cora is a lady. I'm a girl what's doing well. I deal in nothing shady. I've got too much to sell. It's very plain for all to see. I've got a heart of gold. So join the queue. Enjoy the view. I'm big, I'm bad, I'm bold. Boys adore her. She's always ready for a little bit of fun with a duke or an earl or a younger son. But if you've got the wherewithal to treat her as you should, got a diamond bright, she'll cuddle up tight and maybe a little bit more. Oh, 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 She's always dining with the lardy dar and making them pay for the caviar. But if you take her fancy, she won't ask you for a soul. But play your part, she'll give her heart. And maybe a little bit more. <laughs> now, Cora likes a dandy, a chap what's doing fine. And I'm not averse to grandy. In fact, it's quite my love. Of course I wouldn't wait a lot. I'm such a careful girl. I wouldn't blot my coffee book. Not even far enough. Who are you? Who are you in? Oh, all the boys adore her. She's always ready for a little bit of fun with a duke or an earl or a younger son. <laughs> and maybe a little bit more Cora, Cora All the boys and all the She's always to <laughs> You should have stayed in bed, Jim. You're not fit to be up. I'm sorry I frightened you, Barbara. It was a nightmare. I didn't know I was shouting. You must let Dr. McCall examine you, dear. You're not well, and I, I know you don't want to worry me. I don't want to worry anybody. But the proof of my theories is almost within my grasp. I know now that Stiles was innocent. Jim, give it up. I beg of you with all my heart. Don't go on. I must go on. I can't give it up. The man may still be alive. I know who he is. I know his name. It's Tennant. I must go to Burke. I must make him believe me. They must all believe me. I have the proof. Sir, there's a man here from Inspector Burke. He wants you to join him at the Judas Hole. Last night, a girl was murdered, half strangled and stabbed. Have him wait. I'll go with him as soon as I'm dressed. Yes, sir. Oh, Jim, are my pleas useless? Do they mean so little? I'm committed. I can't turn back now. Oh, Jim. Terrible. A 
young girl like that. Hmm. Everybody in the place saw the man. The resemblance was so marked that Cora started the cry of the Haymarket Strangler, and the mob took it up as they set after him. What can I do to help? This is your fault. Why did you have to go stirring up the dead? If you'd let Martha lie peacefully in her grave, she'd her be alive now. This is your doing, Mr. Ratkin. Now, Cora. <laughs> Cora, come on, pull yourself together. These hysterics aren't going to help anybody. Come on, Cora. Try to remember what the man looked like. I don't know anymore. I, I don't know. It was just as though styles had come back to life again. It was the same man, the very same man. I tell you that if you brought me face to face with him now. It was the Haymarket Strangler. She writes. Would I have been wiser to let the dead rest? I have no opinions about that, but your theories have been proved right. There's too much similarity for this to have been coincidence. Rankin, are you prepared to cooperate? In any way that I can, this man must be stopped. I want you to come to my office. For 20 years, this man's been amongst us. Something you've either said or done has stirred his brain. It shouldn't be difficult to point to him now. Any news? Have you traced them? No, we've been over all the early ground, but we might just as well have taken your word for it. I've been over these papers over and over again, but the train always ends at Guy's Hospital. I'm on my way there this evening to go through the records, see if we can find the name of that nurse. Might be able to trace her. How can you? The authorities were notified they couldn't find the runaways. I know, but it wasn't a matter of so much urgency then. Burke. Yes? There's one more line of investigation that I must pursue. Oh, I'll come with you. No, go on with what you're doing. This is an intimate matter. If I'm right, you'll know soon enough. Jim, where have you been? I've been waiting and worrying. Been working with Burke at Scotland Yard, trying to trace the murderer of that young girl. Tell me about it in the morning, dear. You must get some rest. I haven't seen you like this since. Since when? When did you see me like this? Barbara, I've never pressed you on this point. You've made me content to live as a man who only knew half of his life, but now I must know. You must tell me. Who is the man you took from Guy's hospital? Don't ask me that, Jim. Is it an answer that I know myself? The inevitable end of my search that I myself am the man that I've been hunting? Of course, that's it. I've known it for days and been afraid to face the truth. Why did you do it? My only crime has been to love you, Jim. And out of your love, pity me and tell me. When they brought you to the hospital, I, I did pity you. You were so young. And in the periods when you were yourself, so gentle and kind. Always when you were in my care, I fell in love with you. I was a young widow with a baby to care for. Lily thinks of you as a father. What else did you know about nothing, me? Nothing. Nothing at all. You were to be certified. I couldn't believe that you were insane. You took me away? Yes, I did. And I encouraged you to start a new career as a novelist. It was a fearful risk, but I had to create a, another man. Always afraid we might be discovered. I didn't know then that... You were a murderer. Now that you do? The decision's no longer in my hands, Jim. I tried to warn you. 
begged you to give up these investigations. Fate is a strange way of bringing retribution, Jim. Styles will avenge himself on me as well as on you. But I'll not desert you. No. Leave me alone. I'm mad. Styles, the poor wretch, should have no use for a surgeon's knife, but Lieutenant Wood. He was a doctor. They're crowding in on me. Styles, those women. I must get to Burke before. Where on earth he could have gone? He was in my office till pretty late last night, then he left to carry out some inquiries of his own. He seemed very upset. Now, that's what we're going to tell him about this. And this on top of everything else. I'd like um, Dr. Johnson to have a look at him. Perhaps you can make him see reason. I'd be glad to, McCall. Excuse me, sir, but I've just seen Mr. Rankin coming down the street. Well, thank you, Anna. Why, Burke, what are you doing here? Rankin, I've got something dreadful to tell you. Your wife was found dead in your study last night. She'd been strangled and then stabbed. Hannah said she caught sight of the murderer as he was leaving last night. So that's what happened. Burke, I must talk to you alone. Not in there. What difference does it make? That is where she lay? Yes. I told you you shouldn't have come in here. Doesn't matter. Burke, you must arrest me. I killed my wife. Now look, Rankin, you've had a dreadful shock. I will find Tennant before long. I am tenant. I've suspected it for a long time, but last night my wife gave me the proof. You must not make such preposterous statements, Rankin. I killed her with the knife that was missing from the instrument case. It was here, here on the desk. But how could you have found the knife? You wouldn't help me. I found it myself. I found it in Stiles' coffin. That's just your writer's imagination. How could you possibly have dug up a body in Newgate graveyard without somebody seeing you? It's pure fantasy. Turnkey. The turnkey who let me in, he saw me. And the people at the Judas Hole. And now it's the Judas Hole. They'll identify me. Except that it wasn't you they saw. Hannah. Hannah saw me. Let me face Hannah. Where is he, Ken? He's in the study with Burke. Oh, Lily, I, I want you to meet Dr. Johnson. How do you do, Miss Rankin? He's promised to look at Mr. Rankin in the hope that we can persuade him to rest. I hope you succeed, Doctor. Uh, Hannah, would you come in the study a moment, please? Oh, I was just going to get Mr. Rankin his Afterwards, breakfast. Hannah. Yes, sir. I don't understand. Why should anyone want to hurt Mama? What are you trying to do, trap me? I'm not used to telling lies. Nobody's trying to trap you, Hannah. You're here at Mr. Rankin's own request. That's so, Hannah. 
Now, isn't it true the now, way Rankin, you can... you mustn't put words into her mouth. Now, Hannah, who was it you saw? I don't know. Was it Mr. Rankin? It was too dark to see properly. He was more like a beast than a human being. Not a gentleman like Mr. Rankin. Thank you, Hannah. Hannah, I know you think you're trying Thank to you, help Hannah. me. Thank you, Hannah. There you are, Rankin. A girl who knows you well couldn't identify But the knife, I had it here in my hand. Did you show it to anyone? No, you sent me to the Judas hole before. The new guitar key. He'll know me, he must. He let me into the cemetery. There you are, Rankin, it'll humor you. Yes. Why, sir, this is the gentleman what visited you in the house of correction. All I need... I'll to... ask the questions. Did you admit him to the prison again? Well, what reason would I have, sir? Respect him. I want a straight like... answer. Yes or no? Never set eyes on him since, sir. That's a lie. You took me in the side gate. You led me to the cemetery. You should remember I paid you well enough. Are you accusing this man of accepting bribes? Sir, I came to you with an unusual but perfectly reasonable request and you refused it out of hand. I had to find the knife to prove that Stiles was innocent and I did find it. How can you deny that you let me into the cemetery? I'm sorry, sir. I'd help if I could. Upon my soul, I would. Why you lie oh, down? Do. Steady, Rankin, steady. I ask you, sir, how could I get him into the cemetery without my mates knowing anything? Just ask them, sir. The grave. The grave where I found the knife. The earth is still fresh, lies. He will. He can't explain that away. There you are, sir. Fresh earth. Well? See for yourself, sir. Jim Moxon, the child murderer. We buried him last week. Now you're satisfied. It's a trick. You change the headstones. This is Stiles' grave, I tell you. Governor, I demand another... Leave him to me. First, Eddie Rankin. He did step me and I did find the grave, Rankin, I tell you. Steady. You must go. I've asked Mr. Rankin to remain at the yard. He's excited and not at all himself. That's what Hannah told me. I'm not surprised. That'll do, Miss Rankin. He's under the impression that he murdered your mother. And that's only the beginning of it. Naturally, I don't believe there's any more than you do. Has the doctor seen him? He's with Dr. Johnson now. But I want you to return with me. We must get him into a private home before anything else happens. Mm. Obviously a case for observation. Colbath Fields. No, there'd be difficulty about that. Because, you see, he's not actually a criminal lunatic. Besides, it was the request of the daughter and the assistant that I examined him. But an obsessional type. And dangerous. I'd certainly prefer to have him under lock and key. I'm just as sane as you are. My daughter had no right. You can't commit me. You speak as if I was suggesting some hole in the corner abduction. Naturally, the certificate will be signed by a justice of peace. Mm -hmm. Anything we do is purely for your own good. Uh, you'll, you'll never get me. You'll never get me. Uh, 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 get a van from Coldbar Field. And I must get a message to the superintendent. I'm signing the order for commitment. The man's a maniac. No, no, take your hands off me. You've got no right to send for the inspector. Sweet go! What's the meaning of this? Release this man immediately. Burke, you know me better than anybody. You can vouch for me. Put a stop to this. Here's the committal order, sir. Properly signed by the justices. But this is ridiculous. Well, I'm afraid this paper's in order. I'm but afraid Johnson's within his rights. Burke, you, you can't let them. You're not going to. If he goes, I go too. Billy, it won't rest here. Stood there and watched while they dragged him off to that terrible asylum. Lily, he attacked the surgeon. And what have they done to him before that? Miss Rankin, this is not helping him. 
I'll get the commissioner to revoke the order and we'll get him into a private home. Now, you get down to Coldbath Fields and see what you can do on the spot. Right. <laughs> You had no right to put him in here. You're seeing him on his best behavior. Mr. Rankin, it's Kenneth McCall. I'm arranging to take you away. My brother. You don't really want to be put here. Mr. Rankin, if I'd known this was going to happen, I'd never have agreed. You both wanted me out of the way. I see. You're frightened. I'm dangerous. I didn't strangle those women. Bile. Martha Stewart. Mr. Rankin. Call I curse the day I ever saw you. If I ever get my hands up here, you'll not get away just by slamming this door. Where's Burke? Send for Burke. I must have Burke. He'll believe me. I am Kenneth, I tell you, I am. I strangle those women. I must prove it to you. Well, I'm glad you're here, sir. As medical superintendent of this asylum, I want you to authorize Mr. Rankin's transfer to a private home. Oh, my dear sir, the man is a certified criminal lunatic. Oh, I, I admit he's unbalanced, but he, he's not a criminal. He attacked me. If that's not a criminal assault, perhaps you can supply a name for it. Mr. Rankin is a friend and a collaborator. I know the stress he's been working under. He's suffering from a violent psychic upheaval, uh, possibly a projective identification with a murderer. Without a proper examination, I, I wouldn't like to put a name to it. Words, man, words. You have to take the whole case history into consideration. With proper treatment, I, I know... don't agree. I only know that the so-called treatment he's been getting here may do him lasting harm. Do you think you can cure a diseased mind by, by brutality? What are you doing? Get your hands up! Oh. Oh. Here are the papers. I had an awful time getting the signature. There wasn't as much difficulty putting him into the asylum. Well, Dr. Johnson raised the objections. Admittedly, there was provocation. But it's not right to put a man in Rankin's condition into a padded cell. No. Anyway, thanks, Superintendent, for all you've done. Uh, I take it you made arrangements with a private home? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm taking him straight from Colbert Field. Good. I'll convince him that Lily bears him as much love as if she were his own daughter.
and he often used his eyes run down with water said he in love a constant proof for i'll not live very long after deedle dum deedle dee dee dum deedle dee dum they both agree to married be upon next Easter Sunday. But Ratcatch's daughter, she had a dream. She'd not be alive on Monday. She went once more to buy some sprats and tumbled into the water. And down to the bottom, all covered in mud, sank the Ratcatch's poor little Daughter, deedle dum, deedle dee, dee dum, deedle dee dum. You seen him? Seen who? Escaped lunatic. Of course I've seen him. He's hiding under the spuds. Want to look? <laughs> and wipe that silly grin off your face. He's put paid to poor Jack Billings. Spoiled his looks for life. Straight he has. Well, right on him. He was coming this way. Well, I ain't seen no one, and I've been here all the time. He's not in there. There's only potatoes in there. Well, if you hear anything, holler. Come on. Holler? I'll scream bloody murder. <laughs> Said he in love, I'll constant proof, for I'll not live very long after. So he cut it. <laughs> do to him? We'll catch him, of course. I only hope they'll let him enter this private home. Then perhaps with treatment, he'll overcome this obsession. They won't. They'll take him back to Coldbath Fields. It'll kill him. Darling, there's little we can do. He thinks we're responsible for putting him there. But we can't turn our backs on him, Ken. No, darling, we can't. We'll do everything in our power. But as soon as it's over, I'm going to take you to Canada. Have you found him? No, we haven't. The search parties are still out. Hunting him like some wild animal, I suppose. Miss Rankin, this is a matter of public safety. Now, if I'm right, he may return here. You and Miss Rankin may be in very grave danger. Where's the maid? She'll be here soon. Hmm. Look, you go out the front, keep an eye on the road. You come around the back with me. Quiet, right, sir. I'm convinced that knife's in this room somewhere. But I don't understand. Why should he want to return here to kill us? My dear, this is something beyond all our comprehension. I had a talk with that injured attendant, and it seems evident that Rankin underwent some actual physical transformation. You speak as if he were possessed. I believe that he is. You mean that somehow he released some evil spirit from the grave? No, not that. A side of himself he can't control. A, a dual personality that, without the knife, is incomplete. I can understand all that, but... How do you account for this paralyzed arm? It's a physical manifestation, a sort of paralysis associated with what is going on in his mind. I don't understand. He was always so kind and gentle.
you men search this room? It must be here somewhere. Those faces, they haunt me. I tried to kill you. Mr. Rankin, you'll have to come with me. Yes. Put it there. Too late, Rankin. Burke. I charge you. Bury this knife. Shoot. Ah! I... 
I'll see the knives destroyed, Rankin. The roof's back. It belongs here. With me. Thank you.